Tom, uh, fundraising has obviously taken a hit from the initial shock of the crisis in March. Have you seen any um, changes in the process of fundraising, at least, uh, over the course of the f first two quarters? So the first quarter didn't really drop off that much. It was insignificant in terms of the amount of drop off for the first quarter, mostly because everything kind of happened towards the back end of, of uh, the quarter. Second quarter had the lowest fundraising um, since the first quarter of 2008. So there was definitely a significant drop off there. People um, can't meet. Um, a lot of investors like to do a face to face meeting and those are obviously aren't happening. Um, so there's a lot of you can do over Zoom and Teams and uh, the mega funds are still raising money because people are comfortable with the managers. And so, you know, they're starting up another fund. They're happy to contribute to that fund because uh, they know what past history is. But a lot of new managers or smaller managers that are maybe going to fund two or the, starting the first fund um, are having a much harder time trying to raise dollars. The bounce back in the public markets over the second quarter seems to maybe have held um, the denominator effect you were talking about at bay to some extent. Um, and possibly anecdotally investors um, sort of rejigging their um, their limitations on investment, their allocation limits, et cetera. Uh, I wonder to what risk you think there is still that that might come into, um, come into effect, the denominator effect, as were, uh, in later quarters. It's interesting. The, even though the stock market has come up, uh, has come back, um, it hasn't fully gotten there. The NASDAQ, obviously, is. But if you look at the S&P, I think there's five or six stocks that are driving it. And there's about 40% that are still below um, where they were at the beginning of the year. So they still haven't come back. So, you know, it depends on um, what the investments are for the institutions, where, where their money is, is in terms of public markets, whether or not their portfolios are getting hit. But if they've still been in the 40% that I mentioned, and that's kind of a, a bulk of where they are, they may not have gotten that rise. So they still may be looking at private equity to maybe do some secondary sales or maybe not do as much of an allocation for the rest of the year. So that'll kind of play itself out over time. Um, and also depends on what types of industries the private equity funds are invested in. Consumer staples have done really well. So if they've got investments in those, probably something that they could, in, in theory, sell in the secondary market at a good value. Which of the strategies that have been employed uh, are most attractive to investors right now? So investors uh, are looking at turnaround funds, uh, secondary funds. Those seem to be the ones that are high on their list, um, based, basically because of where the economy is right now. For the secondary uh, funds, and you know, with the market dropping, the public market's dropping, uh, investors have their asset allocation. So some are in public markets, some are in private. If they're... Um, total value of their public markets drops, that makes the amount of their private equity funds higher percentage of their portfolio, which they don't want, so they want to reallocate. And one of the ways to do that is to use the secondary markets to be able to get out of a private equity fund and then repurpose that, that capital. So those are two areas that are, that are hot right now. And have any of the changes or adaptations to the fundraising process that you talked about a little bit earlier, um, are, do they have staying power longer term, say like video meetings with LPs or you know, remote due diligence, if any of that's going on? Yeah, I think that'll go on for a while. Um, I think as soon as people are comfortable flying, um, closing deals may have to be done that way. Um, you know, again, people like to sit across from somebody else and not just have a video conversation with them. Um, they can get a better feel if they sit in person. Um, at least that's conversations I've had with investors is that's where they are. And also GPs that are trying to raise money is, you know, investors eventually want to meet in person. They'll take meetings and have conversations. But when they get to that point to really invest, they, they want to see that. So I think that's going to be a bit before that happens, which is why I think number of funds out there is going to kind of drop for a bit before things start to pick up. Given you said a lot of the fundraising that's going on at the moment is happening with the large established managers, uh, did you see that a shrinking of the market in, in, in a sense, less players out there in the future as a result of this crisis? I think that um, for now, there'll be less players. Um, 
we still see from our perspective a lot of new funds trying to start up. So um, we're seeing new docs, uh, you know, LPA agreements, PPMs to, to try and launch a fund. But it's going to take longer for them to get their capital. Um, you know, it was anywhere from 12 to 18 months before this may be longer. Um, and they may even kind of hold off for a while till they can travel and meet people in person. A lot of investors, they'll do Zoom calls, they'll do team calls, but they really want to sit across the table from somebody and, and get comfortable with them that they're going to give them their money. So I think on the smaller funds, they'll, they'll slow down a bit. I think the larger funds or the more established funds that um, have raised two, three, four funds already are going to be able to get the capital, especially if they have a good, good track record. So there'll definitely be some slowdown in a number of funds out there. Um, but again, I think that'll kind of turn around similar to what happened after the 2008 crisis.